Today we're going to be talking about um, statics, um, and in particular, what statics is, is the study of things that aren't moving, or also, to some extent, things that are moving at constant velocity. We're going to be looking at just simple problems like this. So what you see in front of you is uh, basically a couple of uh, things that I have lying around the office, all balanced together. You see that the, um, the, the flat block is balanced on top of the block that's standing, uh, standing up, and um, that we've got a light little wombat little king guy and my viking guy on the other side. And one thing we're going to be looking at is, um, and the, pro the question we're going to ask is, where do I need to put uh, that block that's in the center? And you'll see in this video that it, that it isn't just anywhere. Um, uh, so uh, I can come in here and I'm going to go ahead and move uh, this, this block around and look to see, okay, if I move this to the left, um, you notice it's no longer balanced. It actually falls over, and uh, I'm actually my my have to keep my hand there to basically keep it there. And if I let go of it, um, of course the whole thing falls over. Um, and and incidentally, uh, so does the camera. Okay, so that's the problem we're going to be solving today. And so I'd like to just uh, take you um, to the whiteboard, and we'll start to go through how we actually solve these types of problems. So we already have some experience. Um, with doing problems like these, um, if you uh, if, if you think about it, what we're interested in is looking at problems uh, where the acceleration is equal to zero, and we already know um, what our first set of conditions is going to be, which is our force conditions. So you need to start out with your force conditions, um, and we know what that is, right? Which is that we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction um, has to equal zero, and the sum of forces in the y direction have to equal zero. Um, otherwise, you have acceleration. So, this is this isn't anything new. Um, we have uh, we, we've we've done kind of these types of things before. Um, let's look at for this problem. We're going to look specifically um, at uh, um, at uh, just all the forces um, uh, from uh, um, on uh, on this this central block. So this central block right here. Um, is kind of is the thing that we're going to, to be looking at, um, and that's what we're going to be drawing our free body diagrams of, etc. Okay, so let's start with the forces. Well, what are the forces on this block? Well, the first one um, is, of course, the force of gravity, right? Um, we also see that there's obviously some normal force pushing up on that thing, okay? Um, if we look at uh, the, um, there's also, of course, some basically these guys pushing down on them, um, and the amount that they're pushing down on the, 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 basically the different guys are just pushing down on these blocks with their mass. And so this is FB of the, of the block, and then this Wombat guy is pushing down with his gravity, all right? Um, Technically, that's a normal force on the block, but we know that that normal force is just equal to the gravity of the wombat. Um, and we're going to just assume that this block is relatively flat, even though I, I know it does have a small angle to it. At least it looks like it from this from this angle. Um, and there's also the, uh, the force of gravity of the Viking pushing down. Okay. And those are all the forces we have on there. So if we go ahead and try to do this, and it's pretty obvious that there are no real forces in the x direction. We don't really have to worry about that. So, so we, we kind of can eliminate that part. We just need the sum of force in the y. So if we look at the sum of force in the y, let's look at um, at what we have. We have, uh, um, and we're going to use kind of our standard coordinate systems um, uh, where this is the positive y direction. Okay, if we look at that, then we have, um, uh, the only thing in the positive y is the normal force. And then we have the force of gravity of the board minus the force of gravity of the wombat minus the force of gravity of the viking. And that has to be equal to zero. So you can get some things, you can find out some stuff about the normal force, etc., etc. But there's one really interesting thing to notice, which is um, if we add all of those things up, Okay, if we go ahead and try to uh, try to use it, you notice there's nothing about where we put this block 
in other words we can we could um, you know we could kind of move our block here we could move it here or here or here we can move it any of those places and it wouldn't change this equation and so the thing that actually determines whether or not this the this thing falls over it turns out are not actually the forces it's not from the force equation so what is it coming from well there's a second uh, there's a second requirement for um, for equilibrium, basically for this thing to keep from moving, and that comes from the torque requirement. And what the torque requirement is pretty similar. It just says that the sum of all the torques have to equal zero. Okay, and if you remember, um, a torque uh, t torque is equal to r. Um, times the force perpendicular. Um, we're lucky that all these forces are going to be perpendicular, but um, the uh, and um, so we need to find a way to add up all those torques. And if you haven't uh, watched my video about torque already, you should probably pause this video right now and go and watch that video now. You have a choose a place that you're going to calculate your torque about because if you remember from your torque video. Um, there's this R, and that R is always uh, calculated from the from the the place where things are going to turn. It turns out since nothing is turning, we can calculate our R from anywhere. We can basically choose our origin from which we're calculating our R to be anywhere. Um, but what we're going to want to do is always calculate it someplace uh, that um, uh, that will actually uh, make our lives a little easier and basically eliminate. Um, some force that we don't know. So that's going to be kind of the, the idea behind this. Um, let's say, uh, um, let's go ahead and call um, uh, call uh, this um, right where the board contacts, right here. Let's call that our origin. And again, you can actually call just about anywhere you want to your origin. Um, but we're going to call that our origin. And then let's go ahead and, and write all of our torques. So we're going to have th uh, three torques. Uh, so it looked like there are four. Let's start with it. So there's the torque of the wombat. All right. There's the torque of the, um, of the board. And there's the torque of the Viking. And there's the torque of the um, of the the normal force, or or basically the thing. Now the first thing that you notice is that remember, so then this then these have to be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and write them again. There, it's always just R of you know in this case the wombat times the F of the FG of the wombat, but basically the gravity of the wombat. And it's calculated from the origin. So when I say R of the wombat, R of the wombat is just that line. All right, so that's R wombat. It's just a line from the origin to the wombat. For the board, um, this is kind of a difficult one. It goes from the origin, and it goes to actually the center of mass of the board, um, or basically the center of the board in this case. So that's R of the board. So we get R of the board times the force of gravity of the board. And then the normal force, or sorry, the Viking, we need to do the Viking. The Viking, there's the R of the Viking. Whoops, that should be a V, not a W. Um, R of the Viking times FG of the Viking. And then for the normal force, you notice the normal force, I've set this so that it's actually at the origin. Okay, the reason I did that is because because it's at the origin, if I try to write R of the, you know, of the normal force times F of the normal force, this R of the normal force is actually zero. Okay, because the distance from the origin to the origin is zero. So there's no component from that. And so we can basically eliminate that force, new, uh, the normal force. This is often useful because often in a problem you don't have all the forces you need. I mean, this is a really good way uh, to basically eliminate a force that you don't know. Okay, and so our condition that we end up getting then is that we have the R of the wombat 
times F G is a wombat. Okay. Um, now the the next thing we need to talk about is actually the sign of these. So the sign is kind of hard to get for these, but let's let's talk about it. What you want to do is you want to make it so that basically um, you imagine drawing, and I'll do it for the I'll do it for the wombat. To find out whether the torque from the wombat is positive or negative, what we do is we basically imagine taking the arrow that comes from the wombat, that force G of the wombat, and drawing a circle around the origin. And then you determine what direction that circle is going in. You notice that that circle has to go clockwise for the direction that arrow is pointing. If it's going or sorry, it has to go counterclockwise. That's counterclockwise. It has to go counterclockwise. What we do is whenever that direction is counterclockwise, I always call that positive. And so that means this will be positive. And if we look at the FG of the board, now let's erase this one. If we look at the FG of the board, we notice the FG of the board also goes in a clockwise way around the origin. I want to show you, here's, here's an important one. So that one's positive as well. Notice the Viking though. Notice if I draw, if I, keep the, if I keep that arrow going in the same direction and I just go around the origin, notice the direction I'm going. I'm now going clockwise. I'm going the same direction that a clock would go. Um, that means that that one should be negative. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that plus sign and make this a negative. R of the Viking times FG of the Viking. And that is how we basically set up our equations. And so we can basically get our final answer, or as far as we're going to get with this, which is that if we go ahead and move the this minus sign so everything's positive, we get that the R W R of the wombat times FG of the wombat plus R of the board times FG of the board is equal to R of the Viking times FG of the Viking, okay? And we basically get that. Or if we wanted to, what, what do we, uh, I guess what we were actually solving for was where that bore, uh, uh, um, what that, uh, um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what we can get. So again, this just gives us an idea of how we basically find different answers, for instance, how, um, how we find uh, these torques to be balanced. Now this is just giving you a brief introduction on how to do this. Um, as we go through the class, we're going to do some examples in the class, um, and then we're also going to do, um, we're going to do some, uh, I'm gonna, I'll put up some more examples of problems, but I just wanted you to get the idea of how these torque problems work, or how these statics problems work, and that you basically end up having to use both the forces and the, um, and the, the torque equations. And often, you end up in a situation where these two equations separately uh, need to be solved simultaneously basically to get all of our answers. Does that make any sense? So you may need basically to use the one equation inside of the other equation to get your answer in the end. That's the idea. I hope that didn't confuse you too much and give you some idea about how statistics uh, or how statics work. Um, go ahead and look in your book as well and see if the, the and, and look at their explanation. And again, we're going to spend a, a, a couple of days uh, or a few days basically looking at these and trying to figure out how to solve these types of problems. I hope that was useful. Um, I think it's a, a really nice subject. And this uh, is going to be really applicable to a lot of things, including actually looking at how, um, how muscles work and how our bodies work and, and things like that. Um, so hopefully an interesting subject for everyone and hopefully something you guys will be able to, uh, to, to look into. All right, see you in class.